So today, when you finish this lesson, you'll be able to do conversions using dimensional analysis. So to get started, let's look at some examples of how to do dimensional analysis. I'm just going to walk you through that process. So write this one down. Example one. In example one, we're going to do something real simple. Now we probably actually could do this without dimensional analysis, but just to get started, we're going to learn it by taking something rather simple. We're going to go 15 feet, and we want to convert 15 feet to yards. So write that down. The first thing I need to do when I'm trying to, to, to work something using the dimensional analysis, I, I want to know where I'm starting. So I'm starting talking about the unit of feet. And I want to arrive at the unit of yards. Now, in order to get there, I need something we're going to call a conversion factor. Well, this is a real basic conversion factor. We know it. Three feet is equal to one yard. So let's talk about how we're going to get from feet to yards. Now we know that it is 15 feet in our problem. We're going to start, and for dimensional analysis, I'm going to write this down as a fraction. So everybody needs to be writing that down. And I know that ultimately... I'm going to arrive at an answer that has yards. So I need to multiply with dimensional analysis. What I'm going to do is multiply it by a conversion factor. And I need to remove feet and be left with yards. So the way that I do that is pretty simple. I know that when I multiply something, if I have the same thing in the numerator and the same thing in the denominator, I can cancel those two. So the key to dimensional analysis is being able to cancel from numerator to denominator. So having said that, I'm always going to put in the denominator what I'm trying to cancel in the numerator. So I'm going to put in my conversion factor, three feet equals one yard. I'm going to put the three feet in the denominator. And what's left over are the one yard here. Now, when I do that, the goal, the key to dimensional analysis is the feet or feet canceling. And, and if there were other things I could cancel, if this was longer than just two fractions, I would cancel those as well. Now it's just a multiplication problem. 15 times one yard is 15 yards. And one times three, the feet is canceled, so don't include that. One times three is three. Now 15 divided by three is five. So I've converted it to five yards. Well, that's a pretty simple example of how to do dimensional analysis. Let's look at a second example. In the second example, we're going to do something else. We're going to convert 
565 milliliters to liters. We need a conversion factor. Now, if I didn't know the conversion factor of milliliters to liters, one thing I can do is I can get online, I can Google, and what I would say is how many milliliters in a liter? They'll actually tell me, you don't give me a conversion factor. That conversion factor is this. It is one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. Now, we might already know that one. And again, these are kind of simple, so that's okay. Just as a reminder, we're going from milliliters to liters. What's our goal here? So, we'll write my problem, what I'm going to start with, what I'm trying to convert. That's the 565. milliliters, and I'm going to write that over one as a fraction, and remember, it's going to become a multiplication process here. And I'll multiply it by that conversion factor. The question is, with the conversion factor I have, in the denominator, do I put liters or milliliters? Which one of those two terms within the, the conversion factor, where do I put the, what do I put in the denominator? Anybody know? What? What are, yes sir? Yeah, exactly, perfect, 1,000 milliliters. It goes in the denominator because I'm going to use that to cancel in just a minute because I want to get rid of that whole unit of milliliters. And the numerator goes one liter. Well, that's not too bad, is it? So that cancels with that. 565 times one liter is 565 liters over. 1,000, 1 times 1,000. My milliliters are canceled, so they just kind of disappear. When I take my handy dandy calculator, which in my case could be my phone, I can take 565 and divide it by 1,000. And when I do, I get 0 0.565 liters. All I did since I had 565 here, I divided. The fraction bar we know means to divide. So 565 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.565 liters. Another way to use dimensional analysis to convert two different measurements. Let's look at a third example. Now this one's a little different from what we've done before because we've been talking about units of measure. In this third example, I want to ask you to convert six days to seconds. Well, we've got to have some conversion factors, and we're trying to go from days to seconds. That's our goal. 
really only have to do it one step at a time. And, and I typically start with the smallest unit and start with conversion factor. I don't have a conversion factor from seconds to days. That's not going to happen. But I know there are 60 seconds in one minute, correct? Okay, so I'm going to use that one. What would be another conversion factor? How many minutes are there in an hour? 60. Right, so there's 60 minutes in one hour. And we're trying to get from seconds to days, okay? So I need one more. How many hours in the day? Right, so we'll write that down. One day is 24 hours. So my problem says to start with six days. And I'm going to put that over one. Okay, and I'm trying to arrive at seconds. So it is a multiplication process, and we use some um, some of my conversion factors. Now, what I'm going to use is the convert since this is six days in my first part of my problem here. I'm going to use the conversion factor that has a day in it. So that's going to be this one: one day equals 24 hours. Where do you think the one day goes? Numerator or denominator? Um, Yes, the denominator, because I'm going to use it to cancel out. And then in the numerator, 24 hours. Okay, so I haven't arrived at seconds yet, so I've got to multiply another ratio here. This one is, I need to, to have one now that's got hours in it. I've already used the 24 hours as one day, so I won't need that conversion factor again. But I will need to use the 60 minutes in one hour. So the one hour here will go in the denominator. Why? Because I'm trying to cancel it with this 24 hours there, just like I did before. So in dimensional analysis, it's going to look like this. I'm going to have each time from numerator to denominator that same unit that I'm trying to get to cancel out. And it'll be 60 minutes in the numerator. <laughs> then that brings me to my last one here. 60 seconds equals one minute. Where does one minute go? Numerator, denominator. Where? Denominator. There you go. Now, notice that I've gotten where I was going. I was trying to go from days, which is right here. To when I get done, seconds, which is right here. This is where I was trying to go from days to seconds. So I need to cancel in the numerator here, cancel this days with the denominator here. I need to cancel this hour in the numerator here, with the hour in the denominator here, the minutes in the numerator here, and the minutes in the denominator here. Seconds obviously has nothing left to cancel. All right, so let's do the really difficult math here. One times one times one times one. That's one. That wasn't too bad. Then I need to multiply six times 24 times 60 times 60, uh, and I'll get 
400 and I have this unit left over seconds. So my answer is if I convert six days to seconds, then in six days there are 518,400 seconds. Well, that's not too hard of a problem, is it? So I'm going to give you a problem now that I want you just to try on your own. And you might even consider this a bit of a challenge problem. If you're watching the video, uh, I'll tell you after I give you this problem, go ahead and pause the video, give yourself some time to work the problem. And then when you get it worked and you think you've got it right, unpause it and come back to the video and check your work. So here's your challenge. Okay, I would like for you, for example, for I want you to convert sixteen weeks to seconds. So take a few minutes and try that on your own. Again, if you're watching the video, pause the video, get an answer, and then come back and check it. So let's see how to work this problem. First of all, we're converting uh, 16 weeks, going from weeks to seconds. It's a big jump, I think. Okay, and, and we're going to need some conversion factors here. Well, we wrote some a few minutes ago. We, we know there's 60 seconds in one minute. And we know there's 60 minutes in one hour, right? And we know there's 24 hours. one day. We did all those. Which one am I missing? Yes, sir. Seven days, one week. It is. Seven days in one week. Awesome. All right, so we've got a lot of conversion happening there to go from weeks to seconds, but that's okay. So we know we're starting out here with 16 weeks. Remember, I'm going to write that as a fraction over one. And it's going to be a multiplication problem, right? So if I'm, I'm going to write 16 weeks times a multiplication factor, I'm going to have to use seven days in one week first. The one nearest the weeks, I guess you might say. We've already learned that one week goes in the denominator, the seven days goes in the numerator. Remember, we want that to happen so I can cancel that one with that. The weeks to weeks and numerator to denominator. Then the next conversion factor I'll use is one day as 24 hours, just like that. Continue that process. I've already used this one and this one. Now I'm going to need to use the, the 60 minutes equals one hour, and my hour will go down here. And 60 minutes will go here. And the last one to multiply by will be the 60 seconds equals one minute. Again, just like before, my one minute will need to go in the denominator so that they can cancel my 60 seconds in the numerator. And so now I've arrived at the seconds I'm looking for, and I think I can start simplifying that and doing the math. Well, let's start canceling. I can cancel that week, that week in the denominator, the day for day, the hours for hours, 
and a minute or minute. I've canceled everything from numerator and denominator that I can. So the only thing left to do now is multiply. So one times one times one times one, this is really hard, times one is one. Not too bad, but I tell you this number I'm about to have to write in the numerator, I'm thinking that's going to be a pretty good size number. So I use a handy dandy calculator to answer that. 16 times 7 times 24 times 60 times 60. Wow, I get nine million six hundred and seventy six thousand eight hundred seconds. So in sixteen weeks, there are nine million. 676,800 seconds. That's the first lesson on how to use dimensional analysis to convert units of measures or convert anything. Tomorrow we'll look at additional examples in the second video that will allow us to convert not only just units of measurement or units of days, but also rates. And just like we saw in an earlier example, we'll use rates and convert them to rates so that it's all the same. So we can convert anything, meters per second to miles per hour. So that'll be up in our next lesson on dimensional analysis.